recording now. <laughs> okay. Three, two. <clears throat> Hi, and welcome to Elizabeth Flett's listening party for my brand new EP, Barbed Wire Goodbyes. Thank you for joining me here this evening. I'm looking forward to looking over some of these tracks and having a chat about what my inspirations were for writing them. Uh, so Barbed Wire Goodbyes, as you might have gathered, if you've been one of the people uh, kind enough to listen to it, is a sort of concept album around the concept of safety, what it means to be someone who enjoys safety in their lives, what it means to be someone that doesn't have that safety. And although the tracks can seem a little bit disparate in terms of, of content and themes, it does always come back to that idea of, of safety as a concept. Um, and just to really kind of hit that on the nose, the first track is called Safe Enough and it's about uh, the experiences and the problems of people here in Scotland who are queer and, and experience kind of the microaggressions of homophobia right up to being physically attacked because of their of their sexual identity and, and gender identity and the fact that there's this there's this real sense in Scotland sometimes that we've we've won the war uh, and in the in the UK in general that we've won the war against against homophobia you know we've got pride now we've got rainbow flags it's all good right whereas actually you can still be beaten up for being gay if you're out on on the streets with your partner uh, you can still be beaten up for being gay on the bus as uh, uh, two women were in London um, only last year and I was performing with Boa Frost at Celtic Connections in Glasgow in Jan January, February 2020, this year. And as we were doing this big celebration of queer trad musicians about that same time, uh, it popped up on my phone the news alert that these guys had been chased down the streets in Glasgow one night uh, by a group of guys that wanted to beat them up for being, for being queer, for being gay. So... There's this official, everything's fine, and then there's the personal stories that I've heard and occasionally things that I've experienced myself about what it's actually like to still be queer in the UK. And that official narrative of everything's fine now and people's personal experiences are very disparate. So I thought I would write a song about it. It's not a very happy song, but yeah, I quite like it. So for this song, there's piano, uh, all the instruments you hear on this EP and everything that's happening is recorded by me. It's all multi-tracked me. Uh, and this track, it's the piano in our family music room. I'm very lucky to have recorded this EP here in Tayport, where I'm also recording this little thing. Uh, and it's just an upright piano. We got some recommendations on the best way of recording with a piano and took the back off which was very exciting so it's the piano in this house that you're hearing uh yeah with the back off not very glamorous but there we are okay are we ready everyone got their cup of tea i do <laughs> okay track one coming up Three, two, one, go. Safe enough here, you're safe enough. Safe enough here, so don't complain. The night may hold a thousand fears, and you may cry a thousand tears, but they'll be dry by daylight, my dear, cause you're safe enough here. Getting this all to sync up was really tricky uh, because 
This is a song that's in multiple safe time signatures. Here, and I still work on Garage Band, like a Luddite. <laughs> and Garage Band doesn't let you do multiple away. time signatures. I should really just download Logic. So, you know those with tales to tell the systems I had to try and get click tracks well. in different time so signatures all going at once check, love is love, were irritating, to say the least. <laughs> I really liked, it was one of the things I was pleased that I thought of, that the is it are in an uncertain time signature and then when you get to save enough here it sounds more steady, so it's a mixture of unsteady and steady. Word painting and music, so we go. I was studying literature and French philosophy before I came. I wanted to be an Arabic teacher. I didn't want to be a soldier. I didn't want to kill anyone. I had no interest in the same politics. All the young men were being forced to join the army. Is it safe enough? So that one goes straight on to leaving if you're listening to the album all the way through on Spotify but uh, just because we're chatting about it a bit today I'll just leave leave that there for the sec for the second uh, so those voices that you hear at the end those are actual quotes that I've taken from a website called peace building solutions and they're a non-profit organization that help refugees uh, so those are quotes by refugees uh, when they're talking about the experiences that they've gone through to try and get to safety um, and that links the first track safe enough into the second track leaving which is about the concept of safety and the and the idea of not being safe in a very different way so the first track was talking about not being safe in terms of homophobia and then this track uh, is uh, kind of merging into one of the main themes of the EP, one of the things that I thought was most interesting and important to talk about, which is the, the refugee crisis, which is still going on in the world, uh, but has been overshadowed almost by, by other concerns. But uh, I think people have forgotten how to be compassionate about the issue. And we really need to be being more compassionate to these people that are just trying to, trying to live and trying to find a better life somewhere. And because that's something that I feel quite strongly about, uh, that's one of the main themes that comes up in this EP. So, track number two. Track number two is called Leaving. It was one of the uh, tracks that I wrote latest in the EP writing process uh, with the first, um, the first track was written in November 2019, I think, and then Leaving either leaving or gone uh which we'll hear later on were the late the latest track to be written which was in about march uh so leaving i wrote leaving about the experience of unexpectedly and very quickly having to come back up to scotland at the start of the covid19 lockdown i wasn't expecting to come back up to scotland then i was planning to move back up to scotland this year but not so soon and uh, if you take your mind back to the bizarre world of the start of lockdown where everything was changing every day there was new 
news about what was happening every five minutes it seemed like and at one point it looked like London was going to be completely shut down um it wouldn't be possible to get out of London in the next couple of days like it was going to be imminent that didn't end up happening but at one point it looked like that was inevitable so I decided that I need to do very quickly get across the border and ended up in the weird situation where I had about 24 hours to decide what to bring with me. I didn't know how long I was going to be there. I didn't know when I was going to get back from my stuff. It ended up being um, July, I think, that I got back. So far longer than I anticipated in March. And I know a lot of people ended up in that situation. But I, it was, I wouldn't say it was traumatic, but it was certainly stressful and very strange being in that position, being like, okay, what do I need for the next couple of months? I don't know when I'll be able to get back. I don't know when I'll see this home next. And it made me really think about all the people that have have had to and are continuing to have to make those sort of decisions um, when there's warfare happening, when their house is being bombed, when they are being actively persecuted by people that they know are, are about to arrest them. And it was just a very, very faint echo of experience of what that might be like. And it really affected me. Uh, and so I decided to write a song about all the different kinds of ways of leaving somewhere and how, yeah, uh, I'm very fortunate in that I've never had to leave because of that sort of danger, but many people have. So another cheery track. Maybe I should uh, recommend chocolate to eat whilst, whilst watching this. I was going to eat chocolate whilst listening to this and then I realised I'd probably get it all over my face. And I mean, I have nothing to prove. You all know probably that I'm someone that often has chocolate all over my face, but uh, I mean, let's keep the veneer of professionalism going for at least the next two tracks, so. Just tea for me, although I did choose a nice mug, so I hope you're appreciating this mug choice. Okay. Leaving. Three, two, one, go. Is it safe enough? This is one of the funkier ones. I was very pleased with this guitar riff. That was one of those ones that I was like, yes, you've deserved a biscuit for thinking of this. There are many I'm not actually playing the drums, because I'm just synth drums, as you probably guessed. But uh, fiction letters and synth, drum red synth drums are much more convincing than synth strings, I'll say that much. Many kinds of There's ripping and tearing and choosing to go Choice made in a second or long ago Heading out on the sea or the road There are so many ways In which to go There are many kinds of living Moving vans, packages, forwarded mail. So I think those are four guitar port ports, so ports, four guitar parts um, layered up on each other, which gives this quite nice round what guitar to sound. And what to let it go? Some get to choose quick, some get. Viola chugs come in, classic. Some leave because danger knocks on the door Some leave and end up washed here on our shores Look to our borders, these walls we hold dear Be glad if you're leaving us not out of fear Leave because danger knocks on the door Some It's one of my favourite bits. I really love this bit. Shores. Look to our borders, these walls we hold dear Be glad ah, ah, There are many kinds of leaving One suck is two suck is no suck is oh so many kinds of leaving. There's ripping and tearing and choosing to be a choice made in a second or long ago. Panning this book to ages. I am happy with how it turned out actually.
yeah. <laughs> um, if you listen carefully, I didn't quite get the, because a lot of those parts are just um, like an eight bar phrase, just looped endlessly. Um, one of the loopings just uh, missed the start of an S. So one of them goes, oh, many ways to, but thankfully it, it's pretty buried in there. But if you're bored one day, uh, you can listen to that and see if you can sport, uh, spot which which part doesn't have an S at the start of the loop. Whoops. Okay, so this, um, we're now on to track number three, Barbed Wire Goodbyes. This is the track that makes everyone cry. Uh, quite a lot of people that I've played this to have cried, Not usually, who are not usually criers. Uh, and actually the couple of times that I played it live before live performance stopped being a thing for the moment, um, I also find myself like, I, I, I don't know if fellow creatives have this sometimes that you create something and then you think, oh no, I have to do this now. And sometimes that's because you've made it too hard and then you have to rise to the level of the thing that you've, you've written. Uh, I imagine a couple of the Canaris quintet tunes that I, um, I know Laura Wilkie's tunes are certainly quite tricky, so I don't know if she's ever thought that. Like, oh, okay, I've written this, now I have to play it. Um, so sometimes you get that because it's, it's, you've written something that's so hard, and sometimes you get that because you've written something that's so emotive and so powerful, and even though it's come from you when you start playing it, uh, maybe specifically because it has come from you and it's come from something that you care about, you're like, gosh, I'm not sure I'm going to get through this dry-eyed, um... <laughs> You have to knuckle down and try and think of it objectively. And I certainly get this with the song. Uh, so Barb Bar Goodbyes was written after I heard the news uh, last year that on the Mexican and American border, uh, refugees that came over the, the border, the um, babies and toddlers and mothers were quite often separated from them and held in detention centres separate from their parents. Obviously an incredibly, incredibly traumatic experience uh, to go through for both the parents and the children and with these very very young children when they were eventually reunited and uh, many parents and children still aren't reunited but the the parents and children that were reunited the very wee ones uh, didn't recognize the parents anymore they'd attached emotionally to the caregivers at the detention center and had essentially forgotten who their parents were and uh, there was a video which was very, uh, very hard to watch and really affected me of a mother kind of weeping um, next to her toddler, trying to get her toddler to to acknowledge her, to give her a hug back, trying to get some sort of embrace out of her child, saying, what have you done to my child? What's wrong with my child? Uh, and as someone who, as many of you know, I, I worked in nurseries for several years. I'm someone that's um been very involved in early childcare uh music making uh and it's something that means still means a lot to me and at that point I was teaching classes with babies and and toddlers and very aware that the children in these clips were the same age as the children that I was teaching and um of which I was very fond and just thinking of them in that position was just absolutely horrendous because I mean it could be any of us uh, as I think we've all become very aware over the last couple of years, safety is not something that's guaranteed ever. So I wrote this song from the mother's perspective of a child who no longer recognises her. Uh, and it came out in, in, in one stream, it came out in one go. I'm not quite sure where it came from, but it certainly... Uh, a track that means a lot to me and holds a lot of emotion for me and I'm really glad that it means something to other people as well as is ever the case when you make art that you you feel deeply about you want other people to to feel something too so you ready for a cry <laughs> this isn't a very cheerful EP is it well I mean it is 2020 I'm an artist responding to the world it would be weird if I brought out a cheerful EP this year okay Three, two, one, let's go.
synth organ. Again, synths making my life easier. We said barbed wire goodbyes. Your head turned into mine. I said I'll see you someday soon, my love. But when that day came, oh, your eyes were not the same. Oh, when will you remember me, my love? Whose hands would you hold? definitely the heaviest one off the EP. Gets me, still gets me, and I wrote the darn thing. Um, yeah, that, that is the sound of me uh, just getting up from the chair at the end of the track. I, I ended up really liking just that authentic sound of me moving the instrument at the end as the, as the drones fade out, so I just, just kept it in. So we're on to the instrumental track track number four, which is two tunes, uh, well, tunes, as much as we get to normal tunes in this in this EP. Um, the first one's called The Warm Up and the second one's called Quiet. Uh, so the first one is really the only thing on here that doesn't have any great story. It's called The Warm Up because it's the tune that I always used to use to warm up on the guitar. <laughs> So it's very literally my warm up, and I was play I played it for a couple of years, and then I just thought, huh, this is a fun tune, so I stuck it on here, and then the second one is called Quiet, and I said that the the latest the the um the track that I'd written for this that happened the, mo the most long ago was the one that I wrote in November. It wasn't actually true, I'd forgotten about this one. So I wrote Quiet two years ago, I think, for a Fawcett um, 
Society fundraiser uh, with, and the Fawcett Society raises money for women's issues and women's rights and I wrote a piece that accompanied a poem and an artwork which was about how traditionally women were forced to stay in the kitchen in the house and their vo voices weren't heard and I did this tune, you can check it out on my SoundCloud, it's still up there, I did this tune uh, for that as part of a soundscape where I recorded different things that were happening in my kitchen like the sound of the kettle, the sound of the what happened when you hit a spoon off the hob, you know classic soundscape stuff and layered those those sounds and then played this tune on top of it and it was people had a pair of headphones and then they put the headphones on and they listened to the track whilst looking at the artwork and it was part of an immersive art experience so it's a track it's a it's a track which is a commentary on the traditional roles of women and how they have stopped women from being free to express who they are and living full lives something that unfortunately is still happening today uh, so to give people a bit of a clue also obviously that's a bit of a weird link so to give a bit people a bit of a clue about what that tracks about uh, I've added a fairly horrendous voiceover of a 1950s a good housewife rules completely true got it off the internet this is a guide to being a good housewife from the 1950s completely unironically and I read it at the start to give an idea of why I wrote the track and what its origins were so this is the warm-up and quiet Three, two, one, go. There's so many tracks happening, I think there's about 15 tracks happening. join well <laughs> nearly seamless join I tried the good wife's guide 1955 plan ahead even the night before to have a delicious meal ready on time for his return Take 15 minutes to rest so you'll be refreshed when he arrives. Touch up your makeup, put a ribbon in your hair and be fresh looking. I mean, what even is this? Minimise all the Horrendous. Noise. At the time of his arrival, eliminate all noise of the washer, dryer or vacuum. Let him talk first. Remember, his topics of conversation are more important than yours. Remember, he is the master of the house and as such will always exercise his will with fairness and truthfulness. You have no right to question him. A good wife always knows her place. Faster than I'm comfortable playing this tune, but I persevered. <laughs> Thank you. 
weird glitchy sounds at the end uh, happened purely because something went wrong um, some of my tracks corrupted and I was really really sad for half a day and then I thought oh this kind of sounds quite cool so I had to do the whole track again but I kept some of the tracks uh, the corrupted tracks to pop at the end there because it sounds quite nice like everything's corrupting and, and uh, going horribly wrong and that looped order goes into, I think, quite nicely, personally, uh, track number five, which is Successful War, um, the, the big one, the, the, big, the big track of this EP, uh, the one that was a monster to, to record and a monster to edit and mix, uh, and the one that meant that this whole thing lasted about seven months from... Uh, when I first started recording tracks to the end product. It was the thing that I just couldn't quite get right. And I just, I would try various versions and I still wasn't completely convinced. And in the end, all it needed were more synths. Quite often that's all anything needs in life, I find, more synths. Uh, so Successful War was written in November 2019. I went on a trip to the Imperial War Muse Museum. Some people might say spoiling for a fight. Uh, in the wrong kind of way because I am not someone who would particularly be interested in the Imperial War Museum but I thought I'd give it a go just out of interest. I hadn't been feeling outraged enough recently and I felt like it was time to be outraged on a Saturday afternoon and true enough it did make me outraged. I got what I expected. Um, so I went and visited an exhibition about World War One, which was on at the moment back then and it was a very good exhibition and a very moving exhibition and there's a quote from one of the soldiers letters that I've actually used in the song which was one of the most powerful parts of the exhibition uh, where he was saying it's no longer a war against um, uh, man against man it's uh, a war against man versus weather and they were all essentially drowning in mud and I think that's one of the um, images of World War One that we still carry with us today, just these uh, battlefields mired in mud and horses trying to cope with mud and men trying to cope with mud. Uh, and it was an exhibition that brought up a lot of very powerful imagery. And so the song is partly about that. It's partly about the struggles that, that those soldiers went through in World War One, uh, And it's partly about the things that I found troubling about that exhibition. Uh, there was a plaque right a placard right near the start of it which talked about um, the Great British Empire which I didn't think anyone talks about it like that before um, still uh, because of the liberal bubble that I'm in uh, I, over the last couple of months it's become very obvious that a lot of people still think of the British Empire fondly rather than uh, a horrendous systematic system of oppression and occasionally genocide. So you had this cheerful placard saying that 
Britain had this fantastic empire, which already made me annoyed. So I was annoyed and I'd only been in that exhibition for two minutes. And then right at the end of the exhibition, they said, well, yes, the war was terrible, but not as many people died as everyone thinks. And they all went back to the society and they found it a little bit hard, but hey ho, that's life. And it was this very small piece of board with this very small tactile and addendum to what these men what life these men had after they came back from the largest war that the world had ever experienced and I know from from documentaries and things that I've watched and read that it was far more than just attacked on board what they experienced when they came back their lives were ruined uh, a lot of men had shell shock you know the war that invented a term for PTSD and their lives were never the same for this experience and I I thought it was very unfair of the exhibition not to go into that a bit so that informed this song and then the final thing which informed this song was after I'd been through this very intense exhibition about World War One I, I came out into the foyer and it's a war museum there's tanks in the foyer which is a bit incongruous and the tank near me I happened to read the label it was a, a tank from the 21st century I think and it said that it was a very successful model of tank and that bothered me as a label uh, I mentioned it to my grandparents the other day and they said well a successful tank is one that keeps you alive and that is very true that's a good point but uh, what that label meant for me was successful in that it killed people successful in that it destroyed land I mean how do you define success in the term of war and having come straight out of the World War One exhibition which was all about uh, well not quite enough about the arms trade for my liking and having also recently been at a commoners choir uh, concert where they talked about the bombings in in places like Syria where Britain is still benefiting benefiting from the arms trade and not talking about how it's benefiting from the arms trade. All those things combined in my head. See, that's an epic intro to a song, isn't it? I need to boil this down for when I eventually perform this live, I will need to have a one minute version of the story, but there you are, you got the full version. All those things combined to make this song. So I really hope it's good because a lot of thought went into it. <laughs> Three, two, one, let's go. The year after No warnings about the year after Try to remember what it was that was gained The year after The days after Happy ever after Aren't what we imagined them to be Man versus weather Horse and soldier Drowning together In a human made hell Oh the stories you hold But will never tell Successful war is never won And successful tanks and successful guns Keep firing out at mother's sons Bombed out buildings one, two and three Prop up the 
it's great to God and me. So raise a toast to our glorious shores and remember what you're fighting for in this successful war. In this successful war. When I'm doing it live, I get the audience to repeat this bit. Um, which I've tried to emulate with my multi-tracked vocals, but there's nothing quite like having a room of people singing it all back to you, so I hope to hear that again sometime next year, maybe. That's the sense in. longest to organize but I think the track that I'm possibly happiest with out of the whole thing well thank you so much for for staying with me throughout all of this it was a lot of rambling I hope you enjoyed it and got something interesting out of it uh we're now on to the last track gone um so as it's called in the brackets the lockdown song this was written during lockdown and it was near the start of lockdown when people kept on talking about what they would do when they got back um, to the new normal and when when everything as in everything as in Covid was over they would do this they would do that and I suspected at the time that although there was a lot of hope back in March and April that people would take it as an opportunity to look at things in a more eco-friendly way and a way that was less damaging to the environment. I had my suspicions that people would just go back to doing what exactly they were doing before lockdown. And unfortunately that does seem to be what's happening. People are not taking this as an opportunity to completely transform the way that we see see the environment and see nature. Understandably enough, when, when people have gone through something, when we've all gone something as traumatic as a global pandemic and are still going through it uh you want to return to what you already know rather than establish a new world order but it's still a bit disappointing so i wrote this song a sort of a reminder that this is an opportunity a moment of time to choose two different paths two different ways to go forward and i'm beginning to think that we've possibly chosen a path anyway but hey the song's still here it's, we've not completely run out of time yet to not have a world that's completely trashed <laughs> so it's kind of the it's a very quiet very mellow call to arms sort of way um and the birds at the end of this i recorded in may on my street when in that period of time where the birds were the loudest thing around and they were all calling to each other and you hear the church um bells chiming in the background so that's um, recorded uh, five minutes from my door here in Fife, the bird song you hear at the end. There's also a video for this one, so if you go onto YouTube and type in Gone by Elizabeth Lett, you can also watch the video, if you're really into it. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so this is the last track. Thank you so much for, for listening. I've really enjoyed this. I hope you've really enjoyed it too. Uh, you can buy Barbed Wire Goodbyes on Bandcamp. Um, and hopefully iTunes. I've recorded this before I know whether I worked out how to do iTunes or not, so iTunes? 
definitely Bandcamp, definitely Spotify. Uh, thanks again for, for listening along with me. Let's listen to the last track. Three, two, one. that's that barbed wire goodbyes uh yeah thanks for going on that journey with me hope you learned something interesting and see you next time i've got an ep <laughs> enjoy the rest of your evening <laughs>